Okay, so we'll, we'll just get started. I want to be really respectful of everyone's time, so we said it would be quick so everybody can come in and have lunch and then get going. So we'll, we'll get started and a few people can just sort of settle in in a few minutes. Uh, first of all, I warmly welcome you all to our new space and thank you very much for coming. We've just moved here, so we're very much in transition and very much just sort of getting our feet wet in the new space. Um, this is where City Media is going to be, behind this wall in here. Uh, we plan to put some double glass doors in here so that we've got a real digital newsroom feel in our new, new office. And then our event space here and a video conferencing room in the back. Um, so so lots, lots happening. Right now we're in temp temporary quarters upstairs, so we're, as I said, very much in transition. But really excited and very, very pleased to have you here today. So um, what we're going to do is talk a little bit about digital strategy. I'm familiar with... Uh, most of you know your websites or sort of some of the conversations that we've had either at the Southwest Business Show or or one on one, and I'm just going to try and sort of give you a general overview of what is a digital strategy, what are some of the key things that you want to think about in terms of, of creating your own digital strategy, and hopefully giving you some real tools with moving forward. I'm all about being really really practical, so we have um, a worksheet here. And I was hoping that we can sort of use that as your own sort of takeaway. Um, at, the end, at the end of this, my goal is that you can walk away with something that can, you can start putting something into practice for your own business. Okay? So I'm going to take about half an hour and give you an overview so we're on time. And then after that, I've got a case study. If you want to stick around and have some conversation and look at a case study, I'm happy to do that. But I'll let you know when the half hour is up if any, in case anybody has to get a, leave by 1 o'clock or has parking concerns or anything like that. Okay. Can everybody hear me okay? Okay, good. So first of all, City Media. Um, City Media is, um, we're digital experts, and we've been doing, working with digital media clients for the last 10 years. So we've been in this digital media space for a long time. Um, my background is media, started City Media 10 years ago, and I've been working primarily with newspaper companies over the last 10 years, helping them help their clients get online. So that's why a lot of you probably haven't heard of us, and we've kept kind of a low profile in London, Ontario. But we do have 200 markets across Canada, and we're working with over 40 media partners um, or newspaper publications outside of the London market. So loads of experience in digital media, lots of different case studies, and lots of really relevant examples that I can give you, depending on what your business area is. Right now, we're, um, that's sort of our map of where we're located. Um, lots of strength in Western Canada, which is interesting, but sometimes that's the way things go. And some good strength in Southwestern Ontario. So our, one of our core products or our core network is Shop Local Now, and where we run about 6,000 campaigns. So you may have seen this, you may not. I'm not going to talk a lot about what we do. I'm really going to spend my time today talking about how you can have a takeaway that will help you build your own digital strategy. Um, this is the kind of network that we reach out. Again, I said I wasn't going to spend a lot of time on that. So really what we've learned in doing all of this, working with 6,000 campaigns on a monthly basis, working with that kind of volume, is what are the key components that makes any digital strategy work? Because it's really overwhelming. There's so many options. And I think a lot of the clients that we deal with, there's a lot of pressure to um, work with all of those options at the same time. I've got to get on Facebook. I have to do something on LinkedIn. I have to do this. I don't, you know, I'm not using Twitter the way that I should be. And at, the end of the, and at the end of the day, I always say take a step back and start with what you want to accomplish for your business and then look at these as tools that will help support that. So not to feel so overwhelmed and break it down into four key components. Every digital marketing campaign comes down to these four things. It's about content, great content, and I'll talk about content and what kind of content really works in a digital space. Distribution, but not before content. Everything works in this order. Number one, tell your story, know your story, know your goal. Number two, understand how you're going to get a reach on that. So, so you hear a lot of people talking about traffic. Am I getting enough views on Google? Am I on the top page of Google? If you're not telling the right story, don't worry about that. Start with the story, then get your traffic. And then look at your traffic number, whatever it is, whatever it is, it's good. You've got traffic, that's good. So what do you do with that traffic? Engagement. It's all about engagement. What, what does engagement mean? Engagement, in my mind, is a visual of a handshake. Engagement, at the end of the day, is a personal connection with someone that you're talking to online. And if you're able to develop that level of engagement, authenticity, trust, and that I believe that you can help me, 
then you're going to have a conversion. And that's what everybody wants, conversion. How many conversions am I going to get, right? So if you're following this process and thinking logically about four tracks for creating your strategy, you're going to have conversion. It may be high, high, higher than you expected or not. It doesn't matter. Then you repeat and start again. Okay, so I'm just going to walk you through what that means. First, we're going to look at who the digital consumer is. Surprisingly enough, it's everyone. <laughs> it's 90% of the population access the web to make consumer decisions. Does anybody here um, not consider themselves a digital con consumer? Do you access, when was the last time somebody was online? Five minutes ago, this morning? Were you on multiple devices, more than one? So if you're like me, you work with your cell phone here and your laptop here and something else going on over here, right? And then you're doing your conference calling and other things, or maybe you've got multifunctions going on in your laptop. So not only are we digital, but we're not linear anymore. We're going from here to here to here back, right? And then you get a text. So then you check that. Then your other cell phone rings, home and, home and work cell phones, right? So we're, we're managing multiple devices, multiple messages, all at the same time. And it has a big impact in how people deal with you in terms of how they make a decision about dealing with you for business. So I don't know how many times, I think everybody's like that and everybody would say, I'm a digital consumer. But then, then when we talk to them about digital strategy, they say, well, I already have a website. So there's a disconnect there. A website is important and I'll talk about a website. But there's a disconnect. It, having a website and being accessible and building sort of those four channels, telling your story, getting traffic, building engagement and trust, and going to conversion is a different strategy. So a website is part of it, but because you have a website doesn't necessarily mean that you have a digital strategy. Okay? So the market's changed. Has it ever? Coming from a newspaper background, we used to work with one dimensional, right? Put out the publication and we have lots of readers. And it was really a game of how many people could we get to read the paper, right? What stories could you put up? What stories were people looking at? All one dimensional. Now we've got people looking cross devices. And the most interesting thing to me is everybody's looking at something different. We're all unique. It makes sense that we would all be looking at different things. But you don't think that way because we've been ingrained that we put out a message and everybody's going to see it. Digital strategy is not broadcast. It's a message one to one. And I see it again and again and again. And I'll show you when we do some of the searches. Even searches, we get thousands of um, view reports when we use our Google Analytics and we look at where did people come from. And you'd think people would come for looking for digital media or looking for, you know, we, we do a lot of reports for our clients, so looking for jewelry or looking for uh, women's shoes or whatever it is. We get lots of those. But you, th you think people would be coming into one destination and maybe we'd get 100 views to jewelry? No, we get one to one. 100 different ways that people would search for jewelry. So everybody does it differently, right? Some people are looking for um, the destination, the location. Some people Google and say that place on the corner of um, Southdale and question mark. I get half a phone number. I get the person's first name but not the last name. Um, you get spelling mistakes in there. I mean, the, the gamut, right? Or a specific brand of shoe. Like, I know I want this type of shoe, this size, this, this, this. They put in the whole thing into Google, right? So thinking about how you're talking to your client when they're looking for that specific message, really put on the head that you're doing one-to-one -one communication. Everybody's an individual and you're just talking to lots of people, but everyone has a different story and has a different need. And when you match that need, when you have that shoe, and I put that into Google, and I find that your business has that, boy, do I feel a connection with you. That's what I've been looking for. Right? And so you're able to make that connection. All of a sudden you've moved from content to traffic to engagement. Now I'm engaged because you've got exactly what I want. Right? So here's our consumer. This is what we all look like every morning. You know, multi multitasking, doing things on the way, um, multiple devices. I, I, we were just talking about the seniors, right? And that they're multitasking. This is, Surprised me when I was researching and I wanted to come up for some numbers for today. Surprised me to find that 55 plus do this all the time. They have their laptop in front of them, their, their smartphone beside them, 
and they're watching TV. Texting about what shows they're watching, talking to their neighbors, you know, buying things online. So everybody is multitasking. And really, every consumer, and I'm sure you see this regardless of what business you're in, they're completely overwhelmed. So first of all, they don't want to be sold. They, 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 even though they're interested, or they might be interested in the product or service you offer, it's like, oh, I don't have any time. Don't tell me now. Don't tell me now, right? They're not linear, so they start talking to you about it, and then poof, they jump way over here because I've got to pick up the kids at this time and do this, and then, but they'll come back to that. It's like there's a little part in your brain that says, that was interesting, and I'll, 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 I'll get back to that. And maybe midnight, when the house is quiet, you'll sit down at the computer or go on your phone when you're waiting for a soccer game and check that out, right? So it's not linear. It's like this zigzag ping pong thing that goes back and forth, right? Multi-platform, so think multi-platform in everything you do. More people are mobile than they are on their desktops already, right? So multi-platform is critical. They don't trust you. That's because they're overwhelmed and they've heard everything before, right? So anything that you could say to me, wouldn't matter if it was free, if you're going to guarantee it for 10 years, they've heard it before. And sometimes the more, the more you offer, the less they trust you. That's impossible. Nobody could ever give me that, right? So you start to really have to work to, gener to ge generate authentic trust, right? Um, they don't want to be sold. So think about somebody who's buying a car, this classic example. It used to be that you'd go into a car dealer and they'd find the right car for you. Now, now they do everything, including finding the best price and searching online and then figuring out what that best price is. So I bought my last car. And then you bring in the price and say, well, I know this is how much it's worth, right? There's no room to negotiate on that. And I didn't want to deal with a sales guy. I really didn't, right? And I think that's normal. I, I don't think that that's different from everybody else. They don't remember. So maybe you told them something and then they don't remember from the other day. And they want it easy. So don't remember. The reason we don't remember, it's like Google has become our oracle. You know, seriously, if you, if, you do, if you don't know what to do with something, go to Google. Dishwasher breaks, what do I do? Go to Google. Um, where to go for dinner? Go to Google. <laughs> um, what, was, what, what was the price for that car and how can I compare? You go to Google. So Google is in your sphere of a marketing plan, whether you want it to be or not. And I'll talk about how to leverage that there's lots of ways that you can do it that you don't have to spend a lot of money to be you know, visible in Google, but you certainly do have to know that that's part of your reality. Right? So when you go to Google, now everything is a mishmash. Everything that you see in Google is viewed as content. So remember from my perspective, I'm coming from a newspaper background where the article was here and the ad was in a box underneath, right? So ads were clearly defined and so was content. But when you come here and I search for digital media or digital marketing or I think digital content was the word I used, you can see that I've got a news story at the top, an association and a product, all, they're all treated equally. Which is why I go back to tell your story first. Content has to be solid. If you have a good story, what's the difference now between clicking here and clicking here? It's just about the message and feeling like you're connecting with me, right? So here we are with that number. 90% use digital media to make a decision. How does it break down? It gives you a sense. These numbers change and the stats are different all over, so I'm not for a second saying that these are absolute facts, but in the range, right? Um, this is technocratic media. It's a fairly well recognized source out of the states, but there's lots of differences. 56% um, are using retail sites. The thing that was the most interesting to me, and this is really a flip-flop, right? It's about everything being treated as content. 56 at retail sites, 7% are news sites. Used to be everything if you could get a story about you, right? The truth is, is now, now you are the story about you, right? And you can create that kind of interest and activity by just building your own story. So here's our deer in the headlights phenomena, right? I mean, we all experience that. It's like, oh my goodness. So my consumers changed. They're making 90% of their decisions um, about digital. You know, I'm not sure if I've got the right digital, digital combination. Truth is, nobody's sure. So, th so it's a myth if somebody's telling you that they've got it 100%. There's far too many options and far too many ways that you can work with this um, to really know that you've got it 100%. 
My philosophy is step, get in the game, number one. Start with a clear objective, one thing, one thing that you'd like to do, one thing that you'd like to change. Create your content, walk it through the strategy, and watch it convert and do it again. Every time you do it, you're going to learn something more. Every time you do it, you're going to build on, your, on it. But don't feel like you have to have everything in order to get started. Just start. So that's where we come up with a sheet. So I tried to keep this really simple, just looking at what's, what's your primary business goal, right? First, first thing, this is about you. When you're doing your digital strategy, it's your digital strategy. So what is your primary business goal? And everybody says to me, well, I just want more business. Okay, so let's break it down a little bit more. The more specific you can be about that, the more successful you'll be. So more business, what does that mean? Does it mean more business from existing customers? So really you're, you're, you're building deeper relationships because you can do that really well with a digital strategy. Or does it mean access to a new market? because you want new customers, you've tapped out your market area, and you want to bring in new customers, then you can do that really well. But the more you can break it down and the more you can define that for yourself, the more successful your campaign and your outcomes will be. So e-commerce, just looking at e-commerce. Well, I can't sell anything on e-commerce. I challenge you to think about that. Is that really true? Is there a product mix that you could sell through e-commerce? Is there a service that you could sell through e-commerce? Is there something that you could sell outside of your market that you don't sell currently in your market? Or is there something that you could build by adding virtual customers into your current marketing mix? So these are your questions. I don't know the answers. I know that you know, if, um, sitting down with one of us and kind of going through it, we're happy to sort of delve into that a little bit deeper just to come up with a really clear strategy. If you don't have a clear goal, you're not going to achieve it. Um, education is a big part of it. Do you want to raise your profile through education and, and building a reputation so that people know who you are? Just staying in touch with existing clients? Lots of different options. Does anybody know? Like right off the top, I know, I know exactly what I want to achieve. Okay. Okay, good, good. So with that, um, and your, your customer is, you said, a 60 plus, right? 55 plus travelers. Mm -hmm. So I want to make sure that our relationships with our existing customers are deep, that they're not going to go and Google and look on vacation.com or whatever. Right, right. And that's challenging because you've got a lot of noise in your space, don't you? And so they're really, really breaking down what they're buying, um, which I'm sure is a lot of it is service. Um, and then deeper relationships, there's lots of fun that you could have with that in terms of um, giving them opportunities to share photos. Think of the Novax program that they used to have where they put their, planted their flag on the top of all these different locations, you know. So I encourage you to sort of go with that and, you know, happy to sort of brainstorm with you and think deeper about that in terms of how can you have fun with this and how can you create something really unique for your client base. So know who your customer is, make sure you have access to that customer. And then think like a customer. Don't think like a business owner for a second, because a business owner is far too logical and far too black and white, and you'll cut out all the fun stuff. Think like a customer and say, what would make me come to a travel organization and stay with them, right? So you could send referrals. You might be able to send postcards. I don't know, but the sky's the limit in terms of having fun with your customer base. And that's a really great, solid objective. So if I think of anything else, or if anybody else has a specific one that I can talk to while I'm going through it, I'm happy to do that. But at the end of the day, make sure you're delivering real business value. This is your plan. Don't worry about I sh all the shoulds out there. I should be on Facebook. I should be Twittering. I should be doing this. Just worry about what you want to accomplish. So those are sort of the four key ones that most people use. Some of the other ones we used in examples. Educate and inform. Protect your market share or create efficiencies. Sometimes it's just an online form or a different way for people to engage with you leverage new opportunities or access to new customers. And then this is really important, set your primary destination. So it sounds a little bit opposite of what I just said because I said everybody's all cross-platform. But cross-platform, think about it, you still have to have a primary destination. I don't know how many, how many places or how many times we've seen digital campaigns that go out there that tell people to go, well, you can go to our Facebook page or you can go here, you can go there, you can go there, and their marketing message is one. It doesn't make sense, it's confusing. 
Just give one destination and all of your, all of your sort of assets, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, um, social media, microsites, whatever they are, should all lead into that one destination. The one destination, what that one destination is going to do to you, do for you, is that's where your call to action is going to be. Right? So at the end of the day, that's what we're getting towards. So we're starting with content, going to get traffic coming from everywhere, went to one spot so you can measure it, have your call to action, your level of engagement, and then your conversions. So we'll just look at some of these. Website, this is just a Tassimo website. Um, lots of things to think about with, with your website and your web presence. Most important is that it's clear. The rule of thumb when you're on a website especially when we know that probably 90% of people either found you on Google or um, sourced some of the information on your website from Google, is two clicks away. What that means is two clicks from finding what I wanted, or I'm out of there and I'm back to Google. So do not put a ton of information up here. It's overwhelming and confusing. It needs to be clean, simple, and make sure that you sell your key points on your homepage. And make it easy to navigate. If I'm going to buy um, shop these brewers, there it is right there on the front. I would assume, based on looking at this, their key objective is to sell more machines. Be clear, right? And just talking about websites, I have a lot of clients that say, you know, they start with a website or they've got somebody, their friend of their sons did their website or someone from, you know, a neighbor did their website. And to put up a basic website, it's not hard. It's not complicated. The biggest problem that I find, though, is six months down the, down the road, they've gone away to school, they're not available, they don't have access to it, and you still can't get that Christmas picture off from six months ago. Happens all the time, right? And so don't get locked down by not hiring somebody who, or, giving, or doing it yourself or having the controls over your website, right? Um, just trying to think if there's anything else that's really key about the website. It'll come back to me. This is a microsite. It's a little different than a website. The difference between a microsite and a website is this principle of two clicks away. So real estate is a good example. If you've got a beautiful $2 million home and you want to promote that, you need a microsite to do that, not on your website. To say it's just on my website and I arrive on your website and you just promoted this $2 million home and I found it through Google and I end up on your site and I can't find it, Two clicks, I'm out of there, right? But if you have a primary destination that is all about that home, it's like, well, call me, I want to see it, right? So just be careful you don't lose a good customer on, on that sort of level of frustration because I think we've all done it. We've all been on the other side. Hasn't everybody experienced that where you've gone to a website and said, well, I thought I was going to find this here. And where is it, right? And you don't stay. You don't wait around. You don't pick up the phone and call them and say, hey, I couldn't find what I was looking for on your website. You go. And you're not, probably not coming back, right? So what's the difference between a website and a microsite? A microsite, um, I'm going to assume, and it should be for everybody, that you're going to have more than one business goal, right? So you might want to sell um, courses and products and services all on your website. So if we go back to the website. Well, how do I tell everybody everything that I do, which is everybody's problem, right? It's really hard to do because everybody does sort of a range. How do I show them everything on a website and still be two clicks away? Well, sometimes you can't, right? And sometimes, like with this new model of a car, they want to show you all the details of the car, but they also want to talk about the brand and they want to talk about their community involvement. And they want to talk about all those other things. That belongs in the website. The microsite is, is, is uh, a specific mini page off of your website that we use as a destination for your marketing goal so that people can look at it. It just streamlines the whole process. They go from Google to a great $2 million house in London, Ontario, to the picture of the house to, boy, I want to see that, right? It's just being efficient. But it's through my website. The microsite is through the website. Well, that's a good question, yeah. <laughs> because I think, you know, the, the thing that really makes it confusing, and I'll sh I've got a really good picture for that too, is, is we're, not, we're not linear anymore, right? So we think, okay, well, where does that sit in logic? Like, it's like reading a book, right? Like, what page would it be on? But it doesn't. It doesn't work that way. So it's attached to your website, yes. Okay. 
but you don't go to your homepage of your website and say, hey, sh look at this great car. You can have a link there, but it's another doorway that is just for people who want... I don't, that, I, don't, I always pick car examples, and I don't, really don't know anything about cars, but who really want a great car, right? So you want to have multiple doorways into your content. Because remember what I was talking about, about engagement? You want to have that one-to-one -one connection, right? Somebody might be looking for this kind of car. Somebody might be looking for a minivan. Somebody might be looking for community engagement. Somebody might be looking for something else. So nobody is linear anymore, and nobody follows things in a logical order. Yeah, just think about putting it all in a bottle and shaking it all up. And you know, the interesting thing is, like, a, <laughs> it's, it's true. <laughs> so if you think that way, it's much easier, because that means, you, first of all, you're not wrong, because you look at it and think, well, that's really confusing, because you're doing it one way and another person does it another way. That's the only thing, right? Um, with the newspapers, and working with the newspapers for the last 10 years, I know, for example, the Toronto Star, it was all about, let's get everybody to our homepage, right? Our homepage is gold, everybody loves the Toronto Star homepage, and boy, the CPMs, which is the cost per thousand rate on the advertising on the homepage of the Toronto Star, was phenomenal. And then it started tanking. Well, what's going on? And the traffic started going down on the homepage. It's like, oh my goodness, you know, we don't have the right top story, we don't have the right information. Not true. What was happening is every single person who reads the star or accesses it online is looking for a different piece of information. So you might be interested in sports, you might be interested in the real estate section, there might have been a great story about entrepreneurs in there, and maybe you shared it with your network, right? And then all of a sudden that network, bloop, that page goes way up. So what we saw was it used to be sort of a pyramid, homepage, sports, business, sort of in a row. It's not linear anymore. Now it's a flat line. Nobody knows which page is going to be the most popular because of the way people share it. And if I really want this car and I want to tell my sister about it, I'm going to put that on Facebook and share it with her. So she's not, she's not thinking, I'm going to go to Sue's website. She's thinking, what's that really neat car that she was talking about? Right? It's just thinking like a consumer makes a really big difference. And making sure that your message is unique to that destination. Just back to this for one second. You don't want to have a message about a great car and send people to a site like this. Right? So if you don't have a microsite page and you're sure you're not going to have a microsite page, then maybe think about your destination. Where else could you send people to? An option would be Facebook. You can make Facebook your microsite page. Now, conversion on Facebook is a whole other conversation. It could probably take a couple of hours to talk about that, but, but you can still, to start with, there's, there's a, an option right there. So here's, uh, uh, I searched Windows in London, Ontario. I just wanted to sort of touch base on this because I think there's a lot of confusion over paid versus organic search. A lot of people spend a lot of money to be in these ad positions. Here and here. Has anybody done that before? Use that? Did you? Yeah. Did you find it confusing? I had no idea what it was. I just paid and said, oh well, because I couldn't figure it out. And uh, you know, most people, is, it's a little bit overwhelming to get started, right? Because it depends on what word you're going to optimize it for. And if it's bridal, it's going to be a, and then, and then it's an auction, basically. So the higher, higher value of the word, then the better, then the more expensive it's going to be. Bridal is more expensive than Windows, but maybe Windows in London, Ontario is less expensive than Windows in general and all those kinds of things. So the bottom line is a business owner is like, well, how much is it going to be? And you don't know, right? That difference as a consumer, if you've got me all jazzed up about going to Peru and then you put me at the homepage of a website that's overwhelming and I don't know what I, it, I'm, I feel like I've lost that level of connection with you, right? But if you put me right, immerse me in pictures of Peru, I'm just even more excited to, to figure out what to do next. Yeah, it can be. It can be that simple. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but then take that URL, the full, long, messy one, not your, not your nice, clean destination, and use that even if you use a tiny URL or you, you, know, you shorten it or something to get people to that page, right? Yeah, yep. Yeah. So think about that circular room with all those doors open. That's your door. You've just opened it, right? So you could have a trip to Peru, a trip to Australia, a trip to Italy, and I'll have, they're all different doors, but they all come back into the same core, right? Any other questions? 
Well, great. Thanks very much for coming. I really appreciate everybody being here and uh, your time. And by all means, if you have individual questions or you want to talk later, um, we're really happy to do that. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.